friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for my Monday this and that video and if you're new what these are are just a weekly vlog that I do to keep you updated on certain projects I have going on or experiments to answer some questions that may have come in in this past week and to lead you back to some older videos I have that may pertain to the topics I am speaking of. So the re one of the reasons I do these, by the way, is because all the rest of the videos that you see have been shot at least three weeks prior. Sometimes I'll try to get those in sooner, but most of them are at least three to four weeks old by the time you see them. So I try to have something that I keep more updated, especially anything that's having to do with gardens or ongoing experiments. So let's get to the topics of today. Today is going to be mostly about harvest, though I am going to be talking about a couple other things. And as you would have seen in the thumbnail, here is one of the two biggest zucchini that I've ever grown. Now I'm sure they could probably still get bigger than this. So as you can see in this image right here, I weighed this out and the other one's still in the garden and it's over 11 pounds and what i plan on doing with that and why i let some of them get that big because as far as using a zucchini fresh usually they're best if you pick them maybe only about this big or smaller or even a little bit bigger but the older they get the outside gets really tough and then the inside can get really punky as it starts to mature and the seeds inside start to develop but you want to at least have a couple of them mature completely so that you can get some good seed to plant for the next year and then what you can do with the flesh is you can use it the same way you would any other type of squash like an acorn or butternut and so on it's not going to have the same flavor because zucchini generally speaking is very very mild but the longer you let it sit it does start to turn a bit of an orange yellow to yellow orange color after you take out the seeds you can just bake it up like you would any other type of squash and it turns out pretty good even though the flavor is very bland you can add whatever spices to give it more flavor so typically some Something as simple as some salt and pepper and butter or if you like the sweeter side you can go brown sugar and butter garlic onions whatever sounds good to you and then some people do say that they like to stuff their big zucchini when they get this big with like making a meatloaf and then stuff it in there or bacon the whole thing I haven't tried that yet but that does sound interesting and then I better talk about these real quick so I got to get them back in the freezer this is just one of the seven bags I currently have and these are gallon size of grapes. I still have probably about that much more again to harvest this year. So this is a pretty good year for us for grapes. If you're new, you might not realize, even though we do have a couple other pieces of property, as far as all of our gardening goes, it's happening right here on our little shy one third acre in a neighborhood. So the grapes that we are growing are growing around our deck out back. And I'm gonna be shooting a video soon on how I grow my grapes and why I grow them the way I do because I don't follow the traditional standard method for growing grapes. But when you consider the small area that they're growing in, the fact that I might get 14 to 15 gallons of grapes this year is pretty good considering, and that's plenty for us. And what you'll find about grapes is, is like a lot of other uh, perennial fruits is they can have a couple of really good years and then they're gonna have a down year where you not you don't get much of anything that is normal I kind of look at it as that's their time of rest so that then they can start putting out more fruit again but usually that that uh, really low production happens after the biggest year that you've ever had so I don't expect to get a lot of grapes next year and as such I want to make sure I get all the grapes off there and make the most use out of them. So I have to go out there and harvest them between the rainstorms because unfortunately they get ripe when our heavy rains return. But I also have to get them before all the little chickadees and the raccoons come around and steal them all. So some other harvest related things. You can see I've got a few pumpkins sitting here. I've harvested all the pumpkins so far and all but one in my spaghetti squash. Now, these three pumpkins, as you can see, are in various, they're all the same. These are all the New England pie pumpkin, and they're all in various stages of maturing as far as color. And I wanted to show this again because, yes, you can bring your pumpkins in once they've reached their full size. You can tell because you'll see them, like this one here, starting to get just a little bit of color. And when you they do that, they're very similar to tomatoes. Once they start getting that little bit of color, you can bring them in, and they'll finish 
turning color. With pumpkins, though, it does take a lot longer than it's going to with your tomatoes to start changing color. So I showed this one a couple weeks ago. It was about this color when I brought it in. At the time, I was bringing this one in because it was hanging so low I wanted to get it before the chickens got a hold of it. But now, because our weather's getting colder and colder, I'm wanting, and the plants are all dying back, I'm trying to bring all the squash in now. Now, as far as the spaghetti squash, well, here's a picture of what I have right now. What I've harvested are a couple of pictures. And so I did pretty good on spaghetti squash. Got some pretty good size ones. I got two of them about this size. This is usually standard for the biggest size that we typically will get. But spaghetti squash will be just like pumpkins or anything else. They can be any size. And I always get this wide variety of sizes. But a, a spaghetti squash this big can feed us for like four meals, the two of us. Because that's there's a lot of flesh in that one spaghetti squash but what I'm thinking of doing this year is canning them and I do talk about that a little bit more in a, another video that's coming up about canning I've never canned my spaghetti squash before but I recently watched a video that Wanda from Deep South Homestead did last year on canning spaghetti squash and for those who maybe don't like the texture of spaghetti squash they might prefer it better when it's canned because it's not going to have that same stringy texture it gets when you just bake it but i'm fine with that but you got to cube it up like you do any squash when you go to can it you don't want to can it like a puree because it can be too viscous for the heat to get all the way through to kill off the botulism that could be present in there so that's why it's not recommended to home can pureed squash so cubing it is going to be the best and then you can always puree it when you go to remove it from the jars as long as you have like a root cellar or a room that you keep cool it can last pumpkin spaghetti squash acorn squash they can last for months in storage just like that and i've done that before but i do think i would like to can some so i don't feel like i have to work through it all within the next several months. And before I go on to talk about the beans, I wanted, I forgot to mention earlier when I'm, when I was talking about the grapes, the timing ended up being perfect. I happened to have just pulled all my rhubarb that I had frozen out of the freezer and started making wine. Now what's interesting, I do have a video on making rhubarb wine and how I do it, is that after a few days, it turns a very, very light pink. But as it finishes out, it goes back to the original color of a much darker pink. I just think that's interesting that it does that. But anyway, it was like the day after I got this started that I realized it was time to start picking the grapes. So the timing was perfect because I needed that space in my freezer to freeze up the grapes because that's what I do with them. I put them in the freezer and that makes them much easier to juice so I can then keep the juice raw rather than cooking it down or using a steamer to make the juice. I try to keep it as raw as possible. For wine making especially, it makes the best wine to keep the juice raw when you're doing that. But it's just going to be healthier anyway, even if you're going to drink it as a regular juice. But anyway, I'll talk more about the grapes, how I grow them, and so on and so forth in that video I'll be shooting here soon, which will probably be at least three weeks out from this one. Okay, so the beans, that's the other thing. You would have just seen my video that published on Friday. At the time I shot that, again, it was shot three weeks prior to that, but now it is time to start bringing those beans in to dry. So I've been bringing in the clusters into the greenhouse, and I still got tomato plants out there, so I'm trying to spread them out so they don't totally cover up my tomato plants because they're still putting out tomatoes right now. And I'm putting them in there to dry and bringing some inside to dry and they've been drying up really good so now I'm able to get the beans back up on the store again and so all the beans that are going on the store uh, right now are from this year so they're about as fresh as you can get if you're interested in these beans that I grow and am also selling on my store please go watch that video that I'll link to down below because I had a few different people that had purchased the beans and started growing them but we're not sure when they were what time was best to pick them well it depends on what you're using the beans for if you're using them as a dry bean you're going to pick them later if you're using it as a green bean you got to pick them very young so i show the images and talk all about that in that video so please go watch that if you're interested i will make sure i link it down below in the description box don't forget to click on either show more that you'll see right down here in all caps or if you're on a smart device that little gray triangle or arrow or whatever it is because it seems like it 
it keeps changing right over here in this corner to open up the description box to see all our links and contact information that we have in there okay now on to a couple other subjects so some questions that have been coming in a lot are having to do with solvents so right here i had showed in a recent video this extract that i don't usually use fresh herbs for making extracts but in this case i am and this is rosemary that i'm extracting in raw honey and wine so i've had a lot of more questions coming in about solvents what you can do do you have to keep it in the fridge blah 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 i'm going to be shooting another update video on the types of solvents you can use for your extracts or tinctures they're virtually the same thing and honestly i have looked tried to understand the difference between a tincture and an extract and every time I think I've got it figured out I come across another place that says something different. Some places will tell you the difference between a tincture and an extract is a type of solvent. So a tincture can only be made from 80 proof alcohol and above where an extract is made from everything else. What is definitely true is that all tinctures are extracts but not all extracts are tinctures. The other thing I've read is that it also has to do with the strength of what you're making and some places will tell you tinctures are stronger and some places will tell you that extracts are stronger go figure so i just call everything extract because that's safe because they're all extracts no matter what they're made out of so the one thing i wanted to share is basically you can use whatever form of solvent you want to use that's best for you some people are trying to avoid alcohol altogether so going with a solvent of three parts honey to one part water the water is only to reduce the viscosity of the honey to make it extract better for this one i used a combination of raw honey and homemade wine some people say you can only use alcohol no that you can make very strong extracts without using alcohol and yes, most of them can have a very long shelf life as is. Remember, raw honey is a great preservative, just like that. And I would feel totally comfortable leaving this out. In fact, I haven't put it in the refrigerator yet. So this e extract with raw honey and homemade wine, this can last for years as is without needing refrigeration. I do like to refrigerate the honey infused garlic because I just prefer to do that. But I don't believe that's necessary because the honey will preserve it. But if you're concerned about the raw garlic in there, well, then it probably is best to go ahead and keep it in the fridge. But be watching for that video to come out down the road about the types of solvents you can use. I do have an older one out I can link to, but some I've added to that since. So I do want to do an update. And then another question I've had from a few different people in regards to the ad revenue video that I did last week or that came out last week is if you have the YouTube premium, which used to be called YouTube Red, which means you don't see any ads at all, do we still make revenue off of your views? Yes, we do actually. In fact, it seems like if I remember correctly, it's actually a better revenue because it gets spread out more evenly whereas when we're relying specifically on ad revenue the amount that we make off of that depends on the ad itself and a few other factors but when it's a, a view from a premium customer the amount we make on that view is going to be the same no matter what we don't have to worry about if it's going to be a top paying ad or not so and i'm not encouraging people to go youtube premium i don't i wouldn't myself but i'm just saying that if you do have a premium account yes we still make revenue off that and we can actually go into our analytics and find out how much we're making off the actual ads and how much we're making off the premium accounts oh and then i was going to talk about the cheese i almost forgot so uh, you might have seen in my community post i did get some cheese whacked i did two of each the pepper jack and the cheddar and i didn't want to do a whole bunch because i was just going to do one of each and then I decided to do two since i'm melting the wax and going through all that anyway and so i'm going to be doing an update on this after i let it sit for a few months this hasn't even been a week yet but I will say it was a fun process. I really enjoyed it. One thing about waxing cheese is that as you let it sit on a shelf, because the whole idea of doing this is so you don't have to freeze or refrigerate it, is that it's going to age, which means it's going to become sharper. So it's best to start with more mild cheeses. So I have the pepper jack, which is other than the pepper, it's a very mild cheese, as well as mild cheddar. So I'm 
really anxious to see how these are going to taste in a few months and see if that's something that I want to continue doing. I feel like I really do because I really want to get more done up, but I would prefer to see what I think about it first. So anyway, the, I think these look pretty good. My labels could have been a little bit better. They're a little hard to read, but once I see what I think about this, eventually I'll be doing a video on how I'm waxing the cheese. We're all gonna have our own little styles, but there are some specific steps you still have to stick to and uh, how I did the labels on that. So um, obviously you can see the labels were also, also have wax over them, which is why they're a little hard to read. But anyway, I'll cover that down the road. It'll be a few months out at least. And then one more thing, and this is just on a personal note, who like to just know what's going on in our life. We had an announcement a couple of weeks ago, and right here is what it is, and you can see. So this will be our second grandchild, and this is through Justin and Marlene, the ones that got just got married this last summer. So very exciting news there, and I know some of you were expecting to hear this, and so did I. I knew it wasn't going to be long because they've been together for quite a while and they're in their mid-20s and it's just time. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy my this and that for the week. Don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting in the description box down below and to be watching for those videos yet to come. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.